Hi everyone, we're going to take a look at Cloudera Navigator today. Navigator is part of Cloudera Enterprise and it provides enterprise grade governance and uh, data management for our enterprise grade Hadoop distribution. We're going to take a look first at auditing. As you may know, Hadoop has a lot of different compute engines such as Hive, HBase, Impala, Pig, MapReduce, and lots of different ways that users can access each of these compute engines. There could be desktop tools such as Tableau or Click or Microsoft Excel, browser interfaces such as Hue, and even command line interfaces. With Navigator, it doesn't matter how your users are accessing the data or what they're using to access the data. We will capture all of the audit information in a single consolidated view and we'll provide a lot of detail here to make it easy to navigate and understand what took place at the time of a potential security breach or for any other reasons that you want to understand how the data is being accessed. So let's take a look at a couple of examples with Navigator. We'll start by going back, let's say, let's see the past 30 days worth of data and easily drill down and select that time frame or choose a custom range if we chose to. And then from there, you can see we have some Impala activity and some Hue activity. But let's uh, go through and filter on some custom attributes here. So you can see that every audit activity in Navigator is filtered by all of these different attributes. You can easily sift through and find the data, the activity that you care about. Let's take a look at denied access. Any activity in the system is audited, and if it goes through, it allowed a set to true. If it doesn't go through, allowed a set to false. So for example, if I try to read a file that I don't have read access to, that'll be audited still, but allowed will be set to false. So let's take a look here. Allowed equals false. We're looking for the past 30 days worth of denied accesses in the system. And here we see one, two, three, four, five, six different activities that were all denied. Uh, this user named Training tried to create a directory called Stolen Data in HBase. But let's say we want to start drilling down and see what else this user has done. So from here, we can just click the filter icon beside the username and remove the denied access. And from here, now we see the past 30 days worth of activity that this user has done across the board, across HDFS, across Hive, and any other system that this user, or compute engine this user has accessed. So let's say we want to see the queries that this user has run. We just add that filter, and now we see a bunch of Hive queries. Uh, if Impala was here, that would pop up as well. And let's look over here, uh, August 1st, 2.19 in the afternoon, uh, this user training ran a query on cart shipping. And if we wanted to expand here, you also see that we capture all the exact SQL text that the user ran. This is really important because let's say you had two users accessing cart shipping at the time of a potential security breach. Only with Cloudera can you figure out exactly what queries those users ran and get exact column level visibility into the user's activity. Now, you may also notice that in the query string, there could be sensitive data. So let's say I was selecting credit history where social security number equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. For PCI compliance, you likely need to strip out any of the sensitive or personally identifiable information that is in the query log. And that is super easy to do with Navigator. You only have to uh, go into the configuration in Cloudera Manager and select, say, you want to strip out social security numbers. And we will not only redact this from Navigator audit logs, but any audit log that appears in the system, whether it's HDFS or Impala or Hive, this will be pervasive and all sensitive data will be redacted from all audit logs across the system. Very easy to configure and, and even customize. So if you have something other than social security numbers, simply change the regular expression, change we want to replace the data with, and automatically everything will be redacted. There are lots of other areas in reporting. You can save reports. We have REST APIs to access it. But likely the most important other aspect of reporting is knowing that every audit activity here is published to Syslog. That allows for easy integration with a variety of enterprise frameworks, such as many of our partners in the security space, such as RSA and Imperva and Splunk, so that you can have a consolidated enterprise view into all the audit activity, and Navigator can simply feed into that consolidation. Now let's take a look at some other areas of Navigator. We'll go over to the searching interface. And for any of you who has tried to work with HDFS or any other aspects of Hadoop, you likely have found that it's pretty hard to find the data sets that you care about in an efficient manner and in a consistent manner, regardless of how the data is being stored. 
So more specifically, let's say you want to find HDFS files that were created in the last month or hive tables that are owned by a certain user or even more elaborately, sensitive file, files that contain sensitive data that have permission 777. Hadoop has a variety of technical metadata scattered across the system. Each of the different types of data has its own metadata, not only metadata, but also metadata interfaces, sometimes REST interfaces, sometimes other interfaces. In the case of HDFS, you just can't search it, and you have to write manual shell scripts to find the data sets you care about. Navigator fixes all of that by providing a unified interface into all of your technical, business, and operational metadata, and you just simply point and click to uh, find the data sets you care about. As an example, let's say we want to look at Hive files that were created in the past 30 days. You simply choose last 30 days. That alone uh, could take, say, half a day of gel scripting to figure out how to do. For any data set, we have several dozen metadata attributes that we collect, uh, and you can augment all of this with your own custom tags, name value pairs, and text descriptions, and I'll show you that in a moment, too. But for now, let's say we want to find only files. We want to search for files that have certain permissions. You can see that underneath all of this is a solar interface. So anything that you can't point and click, uh, you can easily extend that with uh, the expressive syntax of solar. Uh, but for today, we'll just look at the point and click interface here. So this is an example of searching through HDFS. Another example would be searching through Hive. Let's say I want to see Hive tables that are owned by that user uh, named Training. And let's say we want to find ones that are tagged as being real estate data. We see one table has popped up. From here, we could click and view the contents of that table in queue, provided we have access to do so. This in itself triggers an audit event that would be collected in Navigator as well. If we didn't have permissions to view this table, that would, of course, be audited as well and allowed would be set to false. So going back to Navigator, let's say we want to now look at this file and understand how it got into the system and how it's being used. So we'll click on here, and this will bring you into Navigator's lineage view. We are the only Hadoop distribution that captures lineage for every transformation that takes place inside Hadoop. That includes Hive and Impala, Scoop, MapReduce, MapReduce2, Spark, Uzi, and Pig. And for any of the structured transformations, we even capture column-level lineage. And this is all automatic. So what we can see here is sales data is used to generate four different tables, sales by region, invalid sales data, and so on. And uh, this operation here, we can see as an Impala operation. These three are Hive operations. If we had MapReduce or Scoop, everything is displayed holistically. And on the left-hand side, we can see the unified metadata view, which includes technical metadata coming, in this case, from the Hive Metastore, as well as business metadata that can be edited manually through the user interface just by simply adding new tags. but also through our REST APIs and extensive partner integrations, where if you're using, for example, Informatica or Trifacta or any of our other partners that are generating metadata, we have really easy, in many cases, out-of-the-box interoperability with all of these frameworks so that you define metadata in one place and is shared across uh, all the various applications. Before we leave Lineage, I'll show one other example of Lineage for a more elaborate view. We have a file here from our training environment with weblogs that shows how weblogs, for example, is being used to generate numerous downstream data sets. And of course, there's column level Lineage here too. And then finally, Lineage can be traced not just on a file level or a table level, but let's say I had some columns we use the solar syntax here, uh, that have a sensitive tag. We see there are four columns here, or four fields here, that have the sensitive tag from sales data and the other three tables we looked at. If I wanted to trace lineage on this specific column, for example, I need to know how sensitive data is being used throughout the system, something that is often a request for PCI compliance. You can see we capture lineage automatically here. A solid line means that that column is being used in the select clause. A dotted line means that that column is being used in the where clause. This is all based off of runtime artifacts. So Navigator works behind the scenes by analyzing all the breadcrumbs that are left through the compute engines 
and from there calculates lineage based on the real runtime experience. And if we want to understand in more detail, we can even drill down on the operations, such as this one, look at that specific transformation, look at the SQL text. This as well is subject to the redaction policy that you defined earlier. And we can further drill down on the instances tab and see exactly when this transformation ran and by which user. We can see here by user training on August 1st at 2 in the afternoon. So now let's take a look at Navigator's policies. Policies are built on top of Navigator's unified business, technical, and operational metadata so that you can easily refer to any data set that you care about, say files that are older than seven years or new files that have arrived or sensitive data. Whatever it is that you can specify using our flexible metadata syntax, you can start as triggering workflows and metadata classification on any of the data set on a very flexible schedule. So let's take a look at, for example, metadata auto classification. Here we can see the solar search string for any hive table that is called sales data. Whenever a new table arrives that meets that criteria, that table will be given this description, these tags, these named value pairs, including one that is evaluated as a Java expression at runtime, which is seven years from today. So we automatically set up a retention time frame for this table based on its discovery into the system. If we look into a little bit more detail on the editing of a policy, you can see we have pretty flexible schedules. You can have these policies trigger whenever the data arrives or is discovered. Let's say anytime permissions change, trigger a policy. Anytime a file name is changed, trigger a policy. But we also allow you to schedule them immediately, like run now, once at some point in the future, or on a recurring basis. And in a moment, I'll show you another policy that runs on a recurring basis. So let's take a look at this archive files older than seven years. We can see it, it runs on a recurring schedule on a daily basis. Uh, it'll run through December 2018. We can look at this policy, which looks for HDFS files that have been created more than seven years ago but have not yet been archived. We check once a day, as we saw, and whenever anything meets this criteria, we tag it for archival, and we send a message to JMS to trigger the archiving activity. So there are lots of other actions. We have a number of customers who use our policies for triggering partner products, such as profiling tools, data wrangling tools, security tools, and we can also trigger encryption, set up encryption zones based on certain criteria that the file or data sets have. One of the areas that's most exciting about the policies engine is how we're more deeply integrating these capabilities into our active data optimizations. This is a first for Hadoop, and we will be incorporating Navigator's policies into ongoing optimizations of the running of your cluster so that you can do things like set up the caching or replication factor, repartitioning of data sets. Of course, some of the more common ones as well, such as replication and retention. You'll see a lot more of this in the coming month as we build out these capabilities more and more.